Okay, so Sword 3 is now the next one we are looking at in this retrospective series as we lead up to Saw X or Saw 10, whatever you want to call it. And Saw 3 is an interesting one because I know some people absolutely love this film. And some people like me are not the biggest fan of this film, but we're going to talk about it. So let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below on Saw 3. Did you love it? Did you hate it? What are your overall thoughts? Smash it down there. Smash that like button. Click subscribe. And let's talk about Saw 3 right now. Okay, so Saw 3, the third installment in the Saw franchise, is a movie that I'm very frustrated with when I watch it all the time. And there are so many facets to this movie that just get under my skin and I don't understand why they made certain decisions. Now, one of the biggest decisions in this movie that I really do not like and really do not understand why they thought this would be a great idea is the way that they kill Jigsaw. Jigsaw dies in this movie. This is the third movie in the franchise and you're already killing your main villain. Like, well, main villain, he's not really a villain, but... You're killing the main guy. Like, tell me another franchise that has done that and continued on successfully. Uh, you don't see Halloween killing Michael Myers very early and then, like, you know, they bring him back. Like, yes, we get it. Michael Myers has a different sort of vibe about him. Freddy, they kill Freddy, but he comes back because he's something else. Jason is the same. Where Jigsaw is just a guy. He's just a normal human being. And the way that they kill him in this movie... Like, I get why they sort of did it with the whole stuff with Jeff and testing him and testing Amanda. But I just felt like it was way too early, way too early to kill kill him off. And you see that as we progress throughout the movies. Things start to just get a bit messy when you bring in Detective Hoffman, who is in this movie. We do see Detective Hoffman, and he plays an important role as we move forward. And I just feel like that switch there just didn't work. As we progress throughout. So I'm not the biggest fan of them killing Jigsaw this early on. That to me didn't really work. It didn't really work. It, it's frustrating because I'm like you had Tobin Bell who's perfect in this role. Who plays Jigsaw so well. Who plays John Kramer and then you just kind of get rid of him. And he's just done after three movies. It's, it's weird. It really is. But the whole main gist of this movie is actually the test of Amanda and the test of Jeff. As Jeff goes through the challenges that he is put through by Jigsaw, you know, after the death of his son, he now has to go through and come face to face with the people who were witnesses, who were the judge, and who was the person that actually killed his kid. And he now has to make these decisions whether to save them or to let them die based on what they did to him in his life. Meanwhile, Amanda is getting tested as we find out Jeff's wife, which is one of the twists in this movie, because you don't actually see them together at the start. You see that she is actually cheating on Jeff. But you find out that they're actually Jeff's wife is there. She's got the shotgun collar, and this is Amanda's test to see if she can keep this person alive and forgive and go through her own things because John Kramer is actually testing her. Now, the best part of this movie is the stuff with Amanda. I actually find the stuff with John Kramer, Amanda, and Jeff's wife, I find all that to be the most interesting part of this movie. Seeing Amanda's character really develop from when we first saw her in the first movie and then saw her in the second movie. Now we start to understand a bit more how, how much John Kramer actually means to her and how much she has actually devoted her life now to him. And the thought of losing him is the possibility that she hasn't comprehend yet. And it's a great character arc that Amanda goes on. And this is why she's one of those characters that we all love in the Saw franchise. And I'm really excited to see her come back for Saw 10. Because I feel like this is an opportunity to really dive into the character more, into her psyche, and evaluate her a lot more. And this movie does that really, really well. We got little sprinkles of it in the first one and in the second one, but this is the one where we really get the character development. We really see what she went through, who she killed, how she didn't follow the rules that Jigsaw puts. Like Jigsaw makes traps, but makes rules as well so that people can survive. It's about testing you, making you go to the lengths that you are willing to go in order to survive. Are you willing to chop your hand off, for instance, to stay alive? Can you do that? 
there's always a way to get out. But Amanda straight up kills people, so we start to see that. And then when we see her start to get jealous because Jeff's wife's there with John Kramer, and she's starting to get the wrong idea. And this is where John Kramer is actually testing her. So she has a really good character arc, and I really like the scene where she's talking to them and they're trying to like basically move the chessboard, chess pieces around the chessboard with each other. It's really, really good. Now, as for Jeff himself, he has a cool character arc because, you know, losing a son would be one of the most heartbreaking things you could possibly go through. I could, could never imagine that. And I get why he does the choices he makes. However, he is very slow at making these choices. I understand that, you know, going through all that, it wouldn't be just like you'd be able to do it because obviously these people have hurt him. But it just, he does, he feels, and it's like, it takes so long, and then it's all of a sudden like, oh, I better save this person. It's like, come on, man, just, why don't you just save him now, or whatever, do what you need to do. It just takes forever. It, re it, it really, really annoys me, like, how long he takes. So, the pacing of this movie, with how slow Jeff is to get through the maze, does come into play and actually drag this film out for me, and makes it feel a lot longer than it needed to be. And I think that's because he takes so long. You're just sitting there waiting for him to make this decision. And you're like, you know, any moment, Jeff, just kill her, walk on and kill her or not. And like, by the time, like the first trap where she's in, like the traps in here are pretty brutal. They're, this this one is pretty brutal and graphic when it comes to the traps and comes to the procedure on John. Oh no, John Kramer. Like it, it's brutal, man. It really is. The first trap we obviously see with the... <laughs> The one that Amanda does with the police person, man, with the police chick, and rips her ribs open, that is brutal. You have the one where he's in the room with the actual chains to him, that is brutal as well. And then you have the Jeff, when Jeff's going through, you have one where she's hung up, butt naked, in this ice room, and then they spray water on her. She becomes like this ice cubicle, man. It's brutal, absolutely brutal. The second one, where the judge is down the caught into this funnel thing and they're dropping rotten carcasses of pigs and it's the guts and the blood and everything like that is coming down and he's drowning in it obviously jeff saves him and then the final one that it comes to is the actual really brutal one where they he's trapped his legs his feet his hands and his neck they're all trapped in this thing and it twists so it twists his arm, snaps his arm, snaps his legs, and then snaps his neck. It is absolutely brutal. And in order to save him, you got to pull the key off and take a bullet from a shotgun. And obviously, the judge is there because Jeff saves him, and then he gets shot when Jeff removes the key. It's brutal. It absolutely is brutal. And then obviously, you have the shotgun around, the shotgun um, chain thing, necklace thing, whatever you want to call it, around Jeff's wife's neck. And obviously, it is attached to John Kramer's heartbeat. So if he dies, she gets blown to bits. Her head gets absolutely decimated. So it is brutal. And then when she does the procedure, man, this is one of the most gruesome things I think I've ever seen on the actual screen is them doing her doing the surgery and like how graphic they make it with the practical effects, like the way that they're able to cut the head open and then remove the skull. It's, it's gross. But it's something you have to watch, especially when it comes to these Saw movies. That's why we go and watch it. We go and watch it for these blood and gore moments. And it is absolutely up there as one of the grossest things I've ever seen. However, it's cool. It really is. It's, it's, this is what makes Saw so entertaining for, for us, is we see these cool, insane things that we would never see in the real world. But, look, obviously then Jeff gets through. He shoots Amanda as Amanda shoots his wife. And then... Jeff is now given his final test by John Kramer is either forgive John Kramer and call an ambulance and then, you know, basically save his wife who's just been shot or he can kill John Kramer right there and he decides he's going to forgive him and kill him at the same time and then that's where we get the thing. Obviously, we know John Kramer has his kid, his uh, little girl trapped somewhere and he's the only person that knows and this is like freaking Jeff out and then all of a sudden... John Kramer dies, and then his wife's head gets blown off. In a gruesome fashion, it looks absolutely insane. The practical effects are absolutely magnificent. It's insane. But the twist again of him, the wife and that, and Amanda being tested was cool. Not as good as one and two, but it was decent. Like, 
overall, for me, this film, I don't hate this film, but I don't think it's one of the best ones in the Saw franchise. And it's a shame because you have such a cool idea with what they were trying to do. I just feel like it was too early in the franchise to do this. Killing Jigsaw, I just don't see why, how you get any benefit of killing him this early. I just don't get it. I really don't get that. But as we're going to find out, three and four, they blend together. Like sometimes I forget which one's three and which one's four. That's why I have to rewatch them because those two really blend. And Saw 4 is going to be another one that we're going to talk about next time. But Saw 3, look, I don't hate this movie, but I also don't love it. It's just there in the middle for me when it comes to these Saw movies. So let me know in the comment section below, what did you guys all think of Saw 3? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Smash it down in that comment section below. Smash that like button. Click subscribe. And I'll see you guys next video. Until then, stay safe and peace out.